We are now going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you for joining. Now, I don't know when you're watching this. You could be watching this before the solar eclipse. You could be watching this after the solar eclipse. I've written this as if you are watching it after the solar eclipse. Now, solar eclipse is kind of 25th, 26th December. I'm recording this on the 18th. You might be watching this on the 1st of January. I don't know. But what I can say is that let's pretend that the sun is leaving your <laughs> solar eclipse. Um, and I'm going to say hopefully things have clarified in relation to your home life or mother's health. Now, I'm not able to read what the eclipse is going to do for you unless I have your ascendant. So I don't particularly know. But I mean, that's one area that could be being affected. Um, in the early part of Jan, please donate old things. If there's something old that you don't need, please donate it. Uh, and meditate if you can, setting the intention for the whole year on your keyword, which is power. So for every single sign, I'm giving them a keyword in addition to the two key words that I've selected for 2020, which is love and action. Those are two key words that you're going to need for 2020. Now, in addition to that, I've looked up Caroline, oh no, Sherilyn, sorry, Sherilyn Darcy, Flowers of the Night Oracle, and I've selected for everybody, I drew a card for everybody earlier, and for you, we got the word power. So I'm going to read that at the end of this reading. Uh, sun enters Capricorn on 15 Jan. The sun is ready to work. Fifth house, hey, all right. So this is not the best transit, um, but you will have a better time when sun enters Aquarius Feb 13. Look, some people are going to have a cracking start to the year. Some people are going to have to wait till Feb. Feb, March is when most of us are we're getting into the year. So for you, it, it is Feb. Um, Venus is in the sixth house. This is not particularly ideal for relationships. Feb 28 onwards, better time for relationships, okay? Uh, Mars is in the third. Oh, fantastic. So this is a great time to promote yourself. That's something you can be doing. Um, seek the next step up in business. Market yourself. This is all very good. So we have a penumbral lunar eclipse, 10 Jan, Punarvasu, 10th house. This is cool. Is this good? 10th house. This is good. Um, try to communicate with the divine how you'd like your career to go moving forward. This is brilliant. You can kind of put in a bit of a wish there about, you know, how how you want your career career to go. And you've got the key word of power. But let's go back to this lunar eclipse that's happening on 10 Jan. This is this could be a bit of an unsettled time. So just be careful, take a bit of extra care. Take some extra care in how you communicate. The other thing is it's a particularly psychic time. So keep a little dream journal or note your dreams around 10 Jan. That's gonna be quite interesting. So let's take a look at this keyword of power. I didn't want to, you to start the year with just, oh, this is beautiful. You got the queen of the night flower. Um, I didn't want you to start this year with just what I have to say. I wanted to give you a little bonus gift, give you a little something extra from Cheryl and Darcy. So you've got another voice who's speaking to you. So when this flower appears, it indicates that a much anticipated new beginning has arrived or a huge <coughs> blocking has been moved blockage has been moved from your path. I'm going to start this again. Hi Virgo Moon, apologies, camera got cut, it tends to do that and I think I was reading your word. I just had to put the file onto the computer and all this stuff and charge my battery and let me make sure I'm plugged in because one time I recorded a whole video and I wasn't even plugged in. I was like oh no. Okay, let's get to it. Power. When this flower appears, it indicates that a much anticipated new beginning has arrived or a huge blockage has been moved from your path. Amen to that. And hopefully that solar eclipse might even be the lunar eclipse. Something's going to go from your life that has been blocking you. I'm telling you, that's, that's happening. Power is strengthened and with it, almost endless possibilities are open to you. Oh, wonderful. You should be feeling more self-confidence and if not, Know that you are now supported to step out and try something you may have been unsure of in the past. The way ahead is very welcoming at this time. Good, 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 good. New beginnings, evolution of self and focus on your personal power and how you can regain or maintain it are all indicated. Closer connections with nature abound, including visiting a natural place or being inspired or assisted by nature in some way in your life. And that's really something to look out for for the whole year, okay? This, this word is coming to you and this guidance is coming to you for the whole year, right? 
Uh, be careful of self, self-obsession, losing faith in yourself, or becoming too power hungry. So affirmation, my power is strong and true. Keywords, power, self-confidence, nature, evolutions, beginnings, self-obsession. And I'll tell you what, nature, I mean, you're in tune with nature because you're watching an astrology video, right? You do care to calibrate your life to the rhythms of nature. You're interested in this content. You're absolutely, you're on the path. You're doing beautifully, Virgo Moon. I'm very excited for you and I'm very excited for your year ahead. And I think this is going to be a year where you truly, where you step into your own power. Uh, and a terrific book for you, in fact. If you'd like a book recommendation, this is a good one. I was recommended this by, it's a terrific book. I'm really enjoying it, Power Versus Force. As you can see, I've read a little bit right here. Um, this is really good. And I was recommended this by a friend. But before my friend recommended it to me, this is a random guy just stopped me one time and he said, do you have a book recommendation for me? And I said, uh, The Power Now, I can't tolle. And he goes, um, I've got one for you. And then he showed me this book. And then when my friend told me I had to read this book, I was like, well, I'm going to buy it immediately. And I've started reading it. It's really, really fantastic. So since your keyword is power, I do recommend the book to you, Power Versus Force. It's, um, I probably should be a bit responsible, sorry, uh, a bit responsible and give you the title and the name. Power Versus Force by David R. Hawkins. And in this, and I'll tell you what's really exciting about this book, the main part of the book that's uber duper ultra exciting is this map of consciousness. Have a look at that. Basically, he maps out a, a rating for every single emotion. This is gold. I'm telling you now, I'm, and if you don't buy this book, don't worry, keep watching my channel and I'll, I will touch on what's in there um, anyway. So you will come across this content. But Virgo Moon, I wish you all the success and wealth and luck and prosperity and beauty and love and that you manifest your heart's desire. I, I wish you a fantastic 2020 and rock on Virgo Moon. I think you're going to have a good one. So. We are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, I don't know when you're watching this. You might be watching this in January. You might be watching this before January. Uh, I'm recording this on 18 December. And let's pretend like the solar eclipse has happened, shall we? So, because my notes are written that way. <laughs> so the sun is leaving, whoops. The sun is leaving the solar eclipse Hang on, let me just make sure that my shirt, I have this thing about having my shirt a little bit popped up here. Sorry, I'm just going to get a bit organized because, because I need to. And Libra Moon, you're very forgiving, so I know I can just spend a bit of time doing that. Uh, sun is leaving the solar eclipse. Hopefully, yeah, all right, so this happened in your third house. Look, I mean, hopefully your sense of courage gets quite a bit of a boost. Okay, now I don't know what's exactly happening in your life. Um, depending on where your ascendant is, you could be going through some really major stuff in relation to this solar eclipse. Um, what I will say is if you're watching this in December and if you need to rest, take time out to rest. Um, that is going to be really important. Hopefully you come out of this eclipse though with your sense of courage renewed, with a deeper understanding of what that word means. Okay. Um, and that you, you will be able to be more courageous. That will free up for you. That's going to free up for you in 2020. It's going to be a lot better, especially if you focus on the two key words that I've highlighted for 2020, which is the word action, which is the word love. Love is a place of courage, right? It's not a place of fear. It's a place of courage. It's a place of really good stuff. So you will be living in that place. It will be very good. Um, let's have a look here. So now in the early part of January, please donate old things. If there are old things that you don't need and you're able to donate them, do that in the early part of Jan. Meditate if you can, setting the intention for the whole year uh, on your keyword, which is affinity. So now I drew, when I was putting my notes together for this uh, particular month, I drew from the Flowers of the Night Oracle written by Cheryl and Darcy, and I've given everybody one word, and I'm going to read you your word. Uh, it's a little card that I drew, so we're going to do that at the end of this reading. Because I want you to start the year with a little bonus gift with another voice that's not just mine. All right, so now what's happening sidereal Vedic wise. The sun entering Capricorn Jan 15. 
uh, he's ready to work and that's happening in your fourth house this is not the best transit you're going to have a better time when the sun enters Pisces which is March 14. The start of the year might be a little bit slow for you all right it, it might not be the most cracking exciting start luckily though you've got Venus in your fifth house that's beautiful so that's good energy right there um, and that's great for romance children creativity creative projects uh, you've got Mars in the second take care with family members right take care especially with how you speak to your family members all right and um, that's something you're going to want to do in January in January we've got a penumbral lunar eclipse <coughs> that's happening 10th Jan in Puno Vasu 9th house for you so this is a great time to use the framework of religion to speak with the divine if you can this is going to be a particularly psychic time okay and if you want to use the framework of religion if that appeals to you um, and you're able to you're connected in with religion then use that framework to connect in with the divine this is a terrific time to do that it's a particularly psychic time as I say note your dreams keep a little dream journal or something by your bed around the 10th of Jan that this is going to be a time where you really want to note that and take that into account now let's take a look at your keyword affinity so as I might have said keywords for this year are love action and you've got the word affinity which is a beautiful word all right it says knowing what truly aligns with you is vital at present a softening of aggression and calming of emotions is indicated by night flocks tensions will ease and peace should prevail but be prepared to do the work to make this happen someone is near who offers companionship a relationship or even an opportunity that is deeper on all levels oh that's beautiful affinity nice yeah okay good one Libra Moon this is good uh, be prepared to give a lot more than you might be ready for if you wish to pursue this relationship wow okay well it could be a busy one huh that could be good uh, you should find yourself surrounded by like-minded people and in situations you truly enjoy and thrive in don't let invitations pass you by beautiful okay so remember this is for the whole year right uh, challenges include tension infatuation and dangerous temptations well there's a bit of an edge to this okay yes be careful uh, jealousy is also strongly indicated by this flower so be very careful when it comes to self-doubt that yes hands down self-doubt terrible get rid of that don't need that but if there's some nice thing go for it <laughs> uh, affirmation I am one with what it is I desire and that's beautiful because that's really what I'm talking about the energy of 2020 is going to be about when you pray you're praying not just for yourself you're praying for everybody I pray for all okay myself and the highest good of others it's very much a time to be conscious of the all the one the one we are all connected right so that's next year is going to be important for that keywords affinity calm peace inner love tension release infatuation and jealousy very interesting all right well there's uh, some love on the cards for you Libra moon it seems like who knows and I mean you're starting the year with Venus in the fifth house it's beautiful which is great for romance children creativity but yeah I mean um, depending on your ascendant depending on lots of things I mean this year could be amazing for all kinds of things so Libra moon look I'm just super excited for you and I think this is going to be a great year um, I wish you prosperity I wish you abundance I wish you great health I wish you great relationships I wish you this affinity this chemistry that you might have with somebody I you know I, I wish you all the best things in the world and take care take care of your health remember to rest when you need to rest um, but take lots of care as well Libra Moon Libra Moon thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon Scorpio Moon welcome oh my Scorpio Moon people my beautiful lovely Scorpio Moon people how are you how are you are you starting to feel the freedom are you starting to feel things are changing are you starting to feel a bit of relief and I don't know what's going on for you uh, exactly because some of you are experiencing some tough stuff and I want to talk about that now I'm recording this on 18th December um, if you're watching this before the solar eclipse 
how are you doing? Uh, this could be tough, okay? Now, if you're watching this after the solar eclipse, uh, and I've written everything as if you're tuning in after the solar eclipse, I've got a note here, hopefully what sustains you has begun to lift and shift to new heights. This may take time. And I was really linking in with what I'd said last time. I mean, hopefully, you know, the solar eclipse is going to clear the last of... <sighs> of anything tough, okay? This could be a tough time. I want to say take rest if you need to up until the start of Jan, if you're watching this in December. Um, take time out. Early part of Jan, please donate old things if you can. That would be a really good thing to do. And meditate if you can, setting an intention for the entire year. Now your key word is protection. Very interesting. And I'm going to be reading that out from the Flowers of the Night Oracle. I don't do this often, but I am doing this as a special little bonus gift for you. I'm doing this for every single sign. Uh, Sherilyn Darcy is the author, and I've picked one card. So in addition to the keywords of love and action, your keyword is protection. Okay, And that might be um, protecting all the great work you've been doing over these last seven years you know Saturn will have seen you and he'll want you to protect yourself good things are going to come in there might be some protection this is not a bad word at all it's not some kind of word that's suggesting anything that's not good but it is an important word and it might be relevant at the start of this 2020 it might be relevant for the whole year that's something you'll have to observe I will read that at the end of the reading so let's take a look Sun enters Capricorn on 15 Jan he is ready to work oh this is good this is happening in your third house so this is a fantastic way to start the year this is great for work this is great for your courage this is great for marketing yourself this could be great you know better time with siblings peers friends this could be good right Venus is in your fourth house uh, this is great for indulging yourself and loved ones at home. So that's lovely. We love to do that at this time. Mars in your first house. This could be draining you a little bit. That could be making your health, this could be impacting your health. You could be a bit tired. You might need to rest. Okay. Now we have a penumbral lunar eclipse happening on 10th of Jan. That's in Puna Vasu, 8th house for you. Okay. So this is a divine time to speak to your loved one or loved one's family. Right. Um, be careful in communications at around this time as well. I would say be careful. Okay? Protection is good at this time. It's a particularly psychic time. Note your dreams around the 10th of January. See if you're a little bit more in tune than normal. Now let's have a read of your keyword protection. I'm very interested to see what this is about and why this has come your way. This is a beautiful word. You've got the flower clove pink, which is a beautiful flower. Fantastic. So now is a good time to ensure you are doing what is considered fair and best practice. I think I have a sense of, you see Saturn, he's smart, you know, this word has come for you. I'll read it first and then I'll, I'll explain. Although you'll find the best protection from, allowing, from following convention and rules closely, be mindful that if you need to push limits, you are not completely breaking the law or the boundaries of others. Interesting. Love can be indicated as well as other deep emotions that bind and entwine you with others. A, prog a progression in a relationship is indicated and the safe opportunity to express your new or increased feelings is offered. Oh, beautiful. Oh, how lovely. Marriage, partnership and alliances are in focus. You may be expected to act a certain way or do something which you do not agree with. Be very careful that you are not becoming obsessed with something. The long-term consequences aren't ideal. All right. Uh, it says here, affirmation, I am protected and safe. Keywords, protection, thoughtfulness, emotions, vitality, encouragement, obsession. I see what Saturn's doing here. The word protection. Don't, because at first I was a bit like, oh, protection, what are we protecting from? No. Hmm. Saturn is kind of... He's going to release and be free. You're going to release and be free. So it's like as you go into that state, he's just saying, take care. All right? It, it's just that. It's just you're coming out of Sadi Sati. Saturn is just saying, and I think Saturn's also saying, I'm protecting you. Right? And, and so there's that message that's coming through nice and strong. And it's also that things are going to be so good 
that like just just take care all right just just you know and don't get carried away and remember that and you see because love can be indicated falling in love now if you watched my life situation video you would have seen how I would have said it's important to not be attached when things are really wonderful and equally when you know so when you're falling in love woohoo and the, but then when you're falling out of love it's like in either state you don't want to be too attached all right so energies are going to be good for you really really good enjoy the ride um, don't get too attached all right I think that's what this uh, protection thing means and I think Saturn is a genius and I think he's protecting you as well so I want to thank you Scorpio moon I want to wish you oh gosh what do I want to wish you I want to wish you all the best things come your way you deserve it you out of everyone in the zodiac I'm not a Scorpio moon I'm you know far away from the, where you are but I tell you I you guys are troopers you're strong you're amazing I interact with you on, on the um, YouTube and you're doing great and it's now time for you it's your time okay this is your time I wish you your time and I wish everything you deserve comes in flooding in for you of these next 2.5 years I'm actually everyone else I've been wishing them a great 2020 wishing you a good 2.5 years so Scorpio moon take care uh, and I wish you the very best so we are now going to welcome Sagittarius moon Sagittarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining how are you are you doing okay are you watching this before the solar eclipse or are you watching it afterwards now it's very important you see because I've written my notes as if as if the sun is leaving the solar eclipse I'm, I'm, I've written this as if it's January so um, if you're tuning into this early how are you doing and I hope you're doing okay because quite frankly this solar eclipse is a big one and it could be uh, a bit full-on so be careful right um, oh my god and if this one was epic for you yeah I remember I'm just looking at my notes now <sighs> Sag moon I mean god, what it's yeah okay okay big time I know um, so how has it been if, if you're watching this in January I hope it's been okay uh, and I hope your sense of self in a deep way is very much intact early part of Jan if you can please donate things get rid of old things and meditate if you can setting your intention for the whole year now every sign I'm giving them a keyword so in addition to the keywords of love and action which are the two keywords for 2020 um, I am also going to give you keywords from flowers of the night oracle by Sherilyn Darcy and guess what Sagittarius moon I'm giving you two and please don't tell any other sign because I'm giving every other sign just one but you are very lucky because two came out so I have to give you two so I'm going to absolutely rush through your little sidereal Vedic report so that we can get to those two words because that's quite interesting uh, now I've got a note here you're getting why are you getting two I think you're getting two because you're entering the final stage of Sati Sati so this is a way of celebrating that fact we're going woohoo Sagittarius moon you're going to be out of Sati Sati after 2.5 years but you're on the home stretch now it's going to go quickly don't worry uh, quickly in a good way all right now sun enters so before we get to your keywords you've got keywords visualization and passion so they're great words I think you got two of the best words um, in this deck actually so this is good uh, now if we have a look at sidereal Vedic report and then we'll go into this stuff which is a lot of fun and I'm doing this because it's my bonus gift to you it's just a little something extra I like to mix it up every time now Sun enters Capricorn on 15 Jan he is ready to work second house not the best transit for you uh, but you will have a better time when Sun enters Aquarius Feb 13 some signs it's true January is not going to be the best month Feb 13 Feb onwards um, even some signs kind of March April type time but um, for you guys at Feb yeah things are going to be a lot better Venus is in the third house is great for socializing uh, perhaps time to meet new people that's really cool uh, Mars in the 12th you might be feeling a bit restless spiritually um, and my advice with that is for the month of January if you want to try a new modality try new spiritual things I know people who have Mars in the 12th house they're the ones who are the workshop junkies they're trying every single spiritual thing out there so if there's something that you want to try some new spiritual modality um, that would be a good time 
to do that in January, right? Uh, we have a penumbral lunar eclipse happening on the 10th of January, Punarvasu, 7th house for you. So my advice there is be careful with what you say to partners of all kinds, business partners and your married, marriage partner, your significant other. Um, just be careful how you speak with them, all right? And this could be a bit of an unsettled time. Uh, it's a particularly psychic time, so take note of your dreams. If you want to keep a dream journal by your bed around 10th of Jan, I know I'm going to be keeping an eye on my dreams. I'm very interested to find out what's happening there. Now let's read these two words. You are getting a double gift here, so I'm very happy to do this. Now let's have a look. Visualization, the flower is petunia. Um, it's Sherilyn Darcy, Flowers of the Night Oracle. Uh, the, the time is approaching when you will receive what it is you have dreamed of, so be ready. How beautiful. I love reading stuff like this. Okay, the answer is yes to questions and perhaps with added dimensions you hadn't really thought of before. Goal planning and setting, checking in, resolutions and reorganizations will all benefit from Petunia. This flower helps you see what is possible and then extend to even higher and bigger possibilities. Psychic abilities, messages and readings, yes, are all indicated. I mean, look at that. We've got um, Rahu Moon together. This is great on Jan 10. But I mean, this is kind of for the whole year, right? So look at this. Uh, psychic abilities, messages and readings are all indicated and you may find yourself exploring these skills and gifts yourself with positive outcomes. Arts and creative activities which turn into jobs are also strongly associated with this flower. I am so happy to read that for you, I'm telling you. Great Sagittarius Moon, this is great. Uh, be careful of getting lost in pipe dreams, okay? Losing touch with reality and not putting action into your plans. Absolutely. Come on, these keywords. Action and love. I said that. This is amazing. All right. Affirmation. Sorry, I didn't read this. I just kind of picked the cards and then affirmation. What I visualize, I can create. You absolutely can, Sagittarius Moon. If there's anybody out there who can really do this, it's you. Keywords, visualization, inspiration, aspiration, wonder, limitlessness, disbelief. How beautiful. Now let's read the other word for you, passion. God, this is a great word. Wish I got this one. Tell you what. You can tell I'm not Sagittarius Moon now, can't you? I'm all signs. That's what I am. All right. Passion. Red flare water lily. Oh, how beautiful. This is great. All right. Well, there is a new possibility for romance even a new relationship. Wow. Improvements are also possible within existing relationships. Wonderful. With the deepening and sharing of feelings for each other. Red flare water lily also connects with passion in other forms, including pursuits, causes, work and projects which set a spark in your soul. Hello, let's ignite that touch paper that is your heart and Manifest beautiful things, how gorgeous. You may find a new passion or a new perspective in an existing passion which changes your position. This could mean a hobby turning into a career. Get out, we just read that. I mean, Sagittarius Moon, if you're not doing this in 2020, I'm gonna come and get you. All right, now wait, 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 let's go back here. Yeah. You may find a new passion or a new perspective perspective in an existing passion which changes your position. This could mean a hobby turning into a career or a cause or project you are part of benefiting some benefiting favorably in some way. I mean this is just amazing. This is not the time to hold back or remain quiet. Yes, speak up. Do what it is you feel strongly about and make your desires realities. Trust can be tested and perhaps not everyone will share your energy for the focus of your passion. My God, this is just out of this world. Affirmation, the fire of my passion will decide. Apologies, Sag Moon, the camera got cut. Now I was reading your affirmation and the affirmation goes like this. The fire of my passion will decide my fate. Wow. I mean, this is just, and I rewatched the video a little bit. Hang on, let me just make sure I'm plugged in. And ooh, cause every time I, yeah, I need a new camera. I'm telling you now, okay. Keywords, but I rewatched a bit of where I left you so that I know where to pick up. And I think it was the affirmation, the fire of my passion will decide my fate. Keywords, passion, opportunity, romance, relationships, desires, trust. Just sensational. And remember, romance isn't just about you being with like 
a person and you know like a like you know you meeting a man or a lady or whatever it's not no romance is i mean there's romance in everyday life you know a dewdrop falling from a flower petal you know i was reading some rumi today and he talked about the the rim of a cup being dry and i just thought wow i think he is so aware and awake to life that he's thinking about the rim of a cup that roomy that man is finding romance everywhere do you know what i mean and, and bringing it to the world through his poetry so uh my god sagittarius moon please create bring some of that romance here for all of us because we need it and uh you know, there's just so much beauty and, and I think you're going to be bringing it to the earth. Visualization and passion. It can't be better than this. You've got, you've got the best cards, right? You know, you might be in Sade Sati, but you've got two, the, the, two of the best cards and that's for 2020. I think you're going to have a good year if you focus on love, if you focus on action, if you focus on visualization and passion. These are your key words. Focus on that. I'm telling you now, you're unstoppable. So Sagittarius Moon, I wish you an incredibly mind-blowing and beautiful and, and heart-expanding 2020 and um, enjoy it. It's, it's coming. It, good energies are coming now, okay? So stay positive. Hang in there. Keep going. Uh, we need you. All right. So thank you, Sagittarius Moon. We are now going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining now, I don't know if you're tuning into this before the solar eclipse. I don't know if you're tuning into this after the solar eclipse. But what I can tell you is that there is a solar eclipse, 25th, 26th December. This could be in an intense time. Let me have a look here. So this would be happening in your 12th house. Your subconscious uh, could be getting quite a bit of a, a workout. And, and depending on where your ascendant is, you know, I would be able to better read how this is manifesting in your life but um, what I can tell you is that this is a bit of a tough solar eclipse so hang in there if you are in it uh, about to have it or have had it um, you know if you need rest um, take some rest take some time out the early part of Jan is a good time this is a kind of general message that I'm giving to absolutely everybody and that is to say please donate old things uh, what you no longer need please donate it now, if you can meditate uh, on setting an intention for the entire year, uh, the key word that I have for you is wisdom. Now, I'm getting this key word from the Flowers of the Night Oracle by Cheryl and Darcy. It's really, really beautiful. And I'm giving this as a little gift in addition to the two key words that I've drawn out for this year, which are action and love. These are the two big key words for 2020. But as for every single sign I'm giving an extra keyword that's just for you and for you that keyword is wisdom so if you get time to meditate on this word and I will be reading out what that means here uh, after I finish my reading so the sun enters Capricorn on 15 Jan the sun is ready to work uh, but it's happening in your first house so this is not the best transit um, you will have a much better time when sun enters Pisces and for you that's going to be March 14th but don't worry there are other astrological events there are other things happening I'll be looking at Saturn Jupiter for example Saturn's moving um, kind of end Jan uh, early Feb so we're definitely going to have a look at that your Capricorn moon you will want to look that one up so um, there's a lot happening but if you have a bit of a slow start to the year don't worry about it things are going to crank up and, and be a lot more interesting later uh, Venus is in your second house. This is beautiful. It's great for socializing, great for time with family. So that's wonderful. Then you've got Mars in the 11th. Oh, fantastic. Great for work opportunities. Great to power ahead with projects. But let's have a look here. Is there anything? I mean, yeah, it's that sun energy, isn't it? So on the one hand, I'm kind of saying sun energy is not the best transit. Mars, though, is fantastic for work opportunities. Look, if you can tune into Mars energy, if you can wear a bit more red, if you can uh, tune into your masculine side, if you can, you know, um, tune into that constructive doing energy. Action. Action is the word for next year. So yes, action, action, action. If you can action things and get things done, um, perhaps it's a great time for networking for you. Perhaps that's more what January is going to hold work-wise. 
Um, we have a penumbral lunar eclipse happening 10th Jan Puno Vasu 6th house for you. So my note here is be careful how you treat competition in the workplace um, or just competition in general in your life or if you're dealing with any legal situations please be a little bit extra careful at this time. Take care basically, take a bit of time. Um, it's a particularly psychic time. 10th Jan. So it's very interesting. If you would like, keep a, a dream journal by your bed uh, on the 10th of Jan. Really look out for dreams around that time, in, in, in the two or three days around that time. That's what you want to be looking at. Now let's take a look at this keyword for you, wisdom. This, I think, is one of my favorite words. I have a few favorite words. One of them, I think my first favorite word is the word beyond. I love that word. I love the word more. That's another favorite word of mine. A bit hedonistic, but hey, why not? Uh, and I also love the word wisdom. I love, I love the word wonder as well. That's another of my favorite words. I've got some classic favorite words. Uh, and wisdom is definitely one of them. So this is for you, Capricorn Moon. So let's take a look. Uh, wisdom. New guidance is offered through a teacher, spiritual practice, or even via dedicated self-education. Beautiful. Listen really well to what is on offer as you will need these lessons very soon. Decisions, including legal ones, may need to be made and you should get as many opinions and as much additional advice as possible before committing. That's really interesting because you've got that um, Rahu Moon happening in your sixth house and I've said this thing about be careful with legal situations. Very interesting that this is coming up. Um, so if you have some legal stuff going on, just, just take care. Get as much additional advice as possible before committing. Honour traditions and be very careful with energy surrounding legacies or valuable items or actions that may become such. Your actions today will be felt for a very long time. Okay, And that's intention, right? I read some really interest, something really interesting recently which was about um, you get the degrees right. Think about a ship turning, right? You get the degrees right. And, and you'll be on track. If you're one degree off, you could be hundreds of miles off course. Okay, so that's what this is asking you to make sure that as you're swiveling, as you're getting ready to launch or put something into the world or do something or say something to someone or whatever it is, as you're getting ready for that, be precise, be wise, take your time, get that intention set right. Your actions today will be felt for a very long time. Yeah, amazing. Education in all its forms is strongly indicated and you will benefit across many facets of your life at the moment by undertaking study. And this is really interesting. I remember um, some time ago I had a reading done uh, at Bondi Beach and my friend, she got one done and she, she was told that she was going to meet the love of her life and she did and I, they got married. I went to their wedding in Paris and this and that. Anyway, it was so funny. I went to that same reader because I was thinking, oh great, I'm going to be told when I'm going to meet whatever, someone. And I got, I drew the card study and I was just like, oh, I was so deflated. I was like, what? You're telling me to study? And that's this, you know, undertaking study. <laughs> so if that's disappointing for you, please don't be disappointed because I'm telling you now, I did study and boy, am I glad I did that because now I get to enjoy uh, very much what I do and that's this. So this is as a result of quite a lot of study as you could imagine. Um, so please don't don't take uh, this as a, as a you know not a very exciting omen here. This is, this is one of the most exciting omens you can get. But I understand if you're deflated is what I'm saying. Challenges of night orchid. So night orchid is the flower that's associated with this card. Becoming childish or refusing to learn and inflexibility. Wow, that's fascinating. I mean, Capricorn Moon, you're very mature. You don't have a problem with that. But uh, anyway, affirmation. I will learn to be open to guidance. Beautiful. With keywords, wisdom, education, lessons, guidance, decisions, inflexibility. So Capricorn Moon, I am going to wish you much wisdom on your journey ahead and I'm going to wish you, I'm going to wish you all the love in the world, I'm going to wish you all the prosperity, I'm going to wish that your dreams turn into reality this year and it's been a long time coming and you know last few years we haven't had the movement that we've needed. I wish you a lot of movement, I wish you um, ease. Uh, in manifesting your desires as well. I wish you so many things. Most of all, I, I wish you great health as well, um, continued great health. 
or improvement to health as well. So Capricorn Moon, best wishes for 2020. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Welcome to your reading. I don't know when you're tuning into this. I don't know if you're watching this. I'm recording this on 18th December. You could be watching this in December. You could be watching this early, de mid-December, like after the 18th, in which case the solar eclipse hasn't happened. So I'm going to say, I hope it goes okay. Um, if you're watching this in January, I hope it went okay. I uh, hope any life restructuring is going okay. I've got the note here. God, I mean, yeah, this is a heck of a solar eclipse. I'll tell you that. It's, it's been a bit full on. I'm hearing reports from people that it has been intense uh, already, right? It was only 18th December and people are getting in touch with me saying what's going on. Yeah, some sensitive people will feel it sooner, okay? Uh, early part of Jan, please donate old things if you can. Meditate if you can, setting the intention for the whole year. So now your keyword is strength, and that made me smile. Yeah, it did. I'll tell you what. All right, so now what's this keyword thing? Now, for 2020, I've identified two keywords, love and action. If you can concentrate on those things throughout all of 2020, you're going to have a good year. For every single sign, I'm giving them an extra keyword. That's my bonus gift to you. And the keyword that I'm giving you comes from Flowers of the Night Oracle. This is Cheryl and Darcy. She's absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to be reading you strength. I'm going to be reading you um, what, what is contained within that. And the reason this made me smile is because I think this has come from Saturn. I think Saturn's saying, strength card for Aquarius Moon. They are just about to start their Saudi Southy period. And I was like, oh God, okay, good one, Saturn. Like he's kind of, he's saying, be strong, you'll be fine, right? If you're honest, self-love, you fly through Saudi Southy. I'll tell you right now. If you can do, if you nail those two things, and they're not easy. Self-love and self-honesty. Just honesty, really. I mean, honesty and, and love for all. Uh, let's have a look. So I'm going to give you my reading, which is Sidereal Vedic, and then we're going to do this reading, which is um, intuitively guided by Cheryl and Darcy. She's a lovely soul. So Sun enters Capricorn on 15 Jan. He is ready to work. Um, this is happening for you in your 12th house. This is not the best transit. Um, you might even have a bit of trouble sleeping, possibly, in the month of January. So watch out for that one. Maybe if you're traveling, you might have trouble sleeping. I've heard that you have to be traveling to activate that. I'm not sure about that. Let me know. Uh, that's kind of January type time. This can be illuminating spiritually. This can be illuminating for your subconscious. This can be a good thing. Um, perhaps if you've had a bit of a rough uh, time with... Let's have a look at where... Mm, I think that was Capricorn Moon, actually, who was having their subconscious looked at. This could be illuminating spiritually or for your subconscious. I was just going to say that if you've gone through some upheaval, that, that, that's not going to come as a welcome thing. Uh, that, that the early, your subconscious might be illuminated. Engage in spirituality um, this month of January. I think that will be absolutely fine. And of course, tap into your Venus. Venus is in the first house. Venus is always offering us good news, right? So there are only three places where she's not. And this, she's in a good place for you. So uh, Venus is great. Great for socializing. Great time to pamper your physical body. Great time to just um, maybe buy a new outfit. Maybe do something. Treat yourself to something, right? Um, Mars in the 10th house. Okay. I mean, this is technically not supposed to be great. I'm looking at your chart. Yeah, no. This should be good for work opportunities. Just don't be too aggressive, okay? Um, don't be too aggressive in putting forward your point of view. But this is still good for work, right? Good for work, good for socializing, good for Venusian things. Um, what else have we got going on here? We have a penumbral lunar eclipse, 10 January, Puno Vasu, fifth house. Oh, this is good. This is very good. Great time to receive creative inspiration. Now, your house, Lord Mercury, is in the 12th house there. This is beautiful. So this is, you could get some spiritual downloads. You could get some guidance. You could get, Mercury's antennas are up. You could, you could really draw some things. This is fantastic. Okay, so um, it's a particularly psychic time. Note your dreams. Note the signs that are happening around you. Note what's going on 
around you. This is, this is really, really good. Now let's have a look at this keyword strength. I'm really curious to see what this says. I've been quite enjoying doing this for the mini readings this time. So let's have a look at strength. Strength. You really do have what it takes and you know that the answers are within you. Absolutely. And that is the first principle of the soul coaching course that I did. I was trained and told that every single person has all their answers within. As a coach, I'm just supposed to create a space, create an atmosphere in which you can find your own answers. That's really what I'm supposed to do. Uh, and this is confirming that exactly. You really do have what it takes and you know that the answers are within you. Rose of Mexico flower. So there's a flower associated with this card and it's Rose of Mexico. Rose of Mexico flower reminds us to be strong, but also that we are strong. Challenges may be upon you or others at present, but they are all part of a bigger scheme and one that you will be tested by, but will overcome. Keep the faith <clears throat> with what it is you are working with at present. You are right. The answer is yes. And this will all work out eventually if you stay true and strong. Okay, and there's that word true, <coughs> which is classic, which is a classic Saturnian word. The Aquarius moon, I mean, yeah, Saturn is, uh, Saturn is a very important player for you. Confidence and the ability to remain calm are also indicated by this flower, but make sure you are playing your part to fully achieve what it is you desire. Be determined, but not overbearing. Challenges are lack of self-confidence and lack of patience. Affirmation, I have within me the strength I need. Beautiful. Keywords, strength, fortitude, confidence, serenity, determination, overbearing. Wow, what a collection. Oh, I love that Aquarius moon. And I think, look, you've got nothing to worry about with Sadesati. Here's the thing. Sadesati is a problem for people like Prince Andrew, for criminals on a mass scale, for anyone who's not on the spiritual path. For anyone who, you are on the spiritual path, you're doing your self-reflection, you're watching a video like this, just keep working the way that you're working and you're going to be just fine. So hang in there. And of course, I'm going to give you motivation and encouragement and whatever it is I need to do. So Aquarius Moon, this year, 2020, I wish you well. I wish you love. I wish you physical strength and health. And I wish you just the very best things that your heart dreams of. I wish that materializes and comes into your life, you know, and... Um, and feel good because Saturn is free, right? Saturn's free of K2. This is great news. So it's time for a shift. Aquarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. How are you doing? Now, I'm recording this on 18th December. And I don't know when you're going to watch this. So you might be watching this before the solar eclipse, in which case... I hope it's going to be okay. You might be watching this after the solar eclipse, in which case I'm like, how did it go? Uh, this is in relation to your work scene, isn't it? The solar eclipse this time. Shifts in your work scene. I hope they've been positive or productive for you. I think we did talk about that. I think somebody did write actually and say that there's, there's some shifts happening on their work scene. So thank you for, for letting me know about that. Um, I've got a note here, early part of January, please donate old things if you can, what you don't need, get the old energy out, clear out, time to clear out, give some things away. Uh, meditate if you can, setting an intention for the whole year and that's on the keyword of emotions. Now Pisces Moon, you are no stranger to emotions and um, I know that, that you're a master of emotions. What I, well, I'm going to explain. Sorry, my head's still stuck in Aquarius Moon. I need to ground. See, I'm with you guys. I'm not grounded. That's why. Are you guys not grounded? I'm not grounded most of the time. But anyway, <laughs> let's ground. Let's get into Pisces Moon. It's been a long evening. I've gone well over schedule here. Actually, let me make sure that I'm not going to get cut off. Because I tell you what, the um, I don't want to get cut off. Oh, jeez. Hang on. Oh, 20 minutes. All right, look, we gotta, we got to fly through this. Uh, I, I haven't got time to muck around. Now, two words, two keywords, right, for this year. Love and action. If you can do both of those, 
great, you're going to have a good year, right? If you can act on what you need to do and if you can love yourself and everybody else, you're going to have a good year. Now, in addition to those two keywords that I've set for 2020, I'm giving everyone their own unique keyword. And for you, the keyword has come up emotions. And I got that from Flowers of a Night Oracle. That's Sherilyn Darcy. She's an absolutely beautiful soul. And I'm going to read this for you at the end of this sidereal Vedic reading. So for January, so Sun enters Capricorn on Jan 15. He is ready to work. This is happening in your 11th house. Great for work, great for promotions, great for socializing, wish fulfillment. This is good. And I tell you what, you're the, one of the lucky ones because most signs have been saying things are going to be fine for you, Feb, some of March, like it's a lot of people having a slow start to the year. Not you, which is good. Um, Venus is in the 12th house, is great for romance and or spirituality. Beautiful, right? Mars in the 9th. Okay, so on the one hand, you've got the Sun in the 11th. This is great for work, but you've got Mars in the 9th. So don't get carried away, right? You're going to have to balance any strong energies, if you, and I've got a note here, don't force your ideas at work. Lead with the sun energy, lead with your soul. Try to tap into your soul. What are you feeling at the core? Um, what do you really need to go for? Your natural power. And I've got a book recommendation for you, which I gave to another sign, I can't remember who, but um, the book is Power Versus Force. It's a really, really good book. If you stay tuned to the channel, you will see me talk about the um, the consciousness guide that, that is, is written about in here. This is by David R. Hawkins. This is a fantastic book. So anyone who wants to learn a bit more about um, measurements for consciousness, the title is somewhat misleading. Basically, he's got this um, guide in here that maps out consciousness. So all the emotions have been given a numerical value. And if you're able to douse or if you're able to do kinesiology, you can kind of tap into the energy of just about anything. It's really quite incredible. Uh, so Mars in the ninth, yes, book recommendation is done. We have a penumbral lunar eclipse, 10 January, Puna Vasu, fourth house. Be careful with how you speak with your family. Absolutely, just, you know, don't, um, just take it easy. And uh, this is a particularly psychic time. Note your dreams. Now I'm going to do this before the camera falls over. We're at 23 minutes. How about I do this very quickly? I'm so sorry. I hope I'm not shortchanging you, but quite frankly, I think you're going to be fine, Pisces moon. You always are. So emotion. Do you know what? I'm not going to rush. It's terrible. So when this cuts out, I put in a fresh card. Don't worry, I'll be back. I was rushing. How bad is that? It's not good, is it? Come on. I'm not going to rush. It's not the way. I know. Let's take our time because then I, I, I was, then I would have to really rush the end bit where for every single sign I'm saying what I wish for you and I'm just kind of plucking it out of my head and I want to do that properly. So it's worth getting a fresh memory card for that. Emotions. Let's take time here. So the beginning of something may be very close. People, situations and ideas receive the attention they require. Perhaps a boost has been needed to get started or to uncover what may have seemed out of reach. Something will come through via the generosity of very focused attention. Could you be the one to provide this? Question mark. It's very interesting. Be sure to think of others at the moment as someone may need your help or guidance, but you may not be aware of this. This can also mean you are neglecting yourself and failing to be kind to you. Calm is being shown, a period of settling down after turmoil and a balancing of emotional energies. Challenges are moodiness, emotional manipulation and volatile outbursts. It's a great time to breathe before you react or take offense. Yeah, and I mean, look, I, I relate to this. Um, this is very good. Affirmation. I haven't, I haven't been moody or like had a volatile outburst. I had a couple at me though. <laughs> um, affirmation. I'm calm and I'm ready to begin. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm ready to begin. I love that. Keywords, emotions, calm, compassion, generosity, beginnings, moodiness. Oh, that's lovely. Wow, Pisces moon. Well, I think you're going to have an amazing year. Pisces moon, I think we got cut off, but equally, I think I also did manage to read everything from your bit, which was emotions, and it was really beautiful. And what I've been saying to everyone, I've got a fresh memory card, so we'll chat a bit. Um, 
as a heart-based sensitive person, right, which is you, I know it is, right, um, otherwise you wouldn't be tuned into this channel, you're going to have a good year next year, okay, next year is going to be a really good year because it's the sensitive people that are going to flourish. Um, it's a fantastic year to act on your heart's desire. If you want to start a venture, if you want to start a business that's more in line with who you are and, and what you want to be and what you want to be putting out into the world, next year is a great year to start doing that um, or continue doing that or take that to the next level, right? Um, it's about love, it's about action, and it's about, it's a mature love that we're talking about. It's a kind of mature love that knows when to go in and be with someone or when to leave them alone. It's a mature love that, um, you know, devotes energy to the other, but at the same time devotes energy to the self, right? And that's hard to do. Um, believe me, I'm working on that myself all the time. I think you're going to have a great year. And I want to wish you, and apologies, I was rushing just now. Look at me. It's because I tell you why. It's because I've never done such a long <laughs> set of readings. I'm, I'm going to have, um, oh, I don't know, like this. I've got how many files? One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to have six video files. They're all like 4.2 gigs to stitch together. It's like, oh. So that's why I was kind of thinking, oh, could I just be quick with you? But that's terrible of me. I shouldn't do that. For every single sign after I've read them, they're flowers of the night oracle. I have been saying what I wish for you. And Pisces Moon, what do I wish for you? I wish you, I wish you all the love in the world. I wish that, I'm getting kind of, I wish you the strength to, yeah, do you need strength, Pisces Moon? I don't know, but I'm wishing you strength to keep being the radiant, beautiful soul that you are. As well, I'm just okay. These words are coming in. Wow, I'm having a little bit of a Rahu Moon moment myself right now. <laughs> it's not even, it's not even the tenth of Jan. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like you guys are really amazing, and anyone of you who feels like you're kind of on the fringes or. Um, that you're out there or that you're in no man's land or if you're going through some major transitions or any of that please hang in there because your time is coming and I really think 2020 across the board for the whole world is going to be a lot lot better so um, for some of you it's going to be particularly better well actually Pisces moon this is you we're talking about here. Let me bring up your chart. You're going to have Saturn 11th from the moon. Let me bring this up. Yeah, you are. I'm going to be making my Saturn video. Oh my God. You're going to have, a, you're going to have an amazing time. You're going to have an amazing, 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 amazing time. Uh, I mean it. You are one of three lucky signs. When Saturn is 11th, 6th and 3rd from the moon, that's where he gives big and that's what you want. And you're going to have a 2.5 years, beautiful 2.5 years. So that's probably why I'm wishing you strength as well because you will be working with Saturn and you need to be strong to work with Saturn. Um, that's probably why that word strength came in because Saturn was saying, hello, talk about me. Yeah, because I, <laughs> yeah, I know what's going on. Because somebody got the strength card earlier and that was that was a little satin thing right there. So, okay, Pisces Moon. Oh my God, you're going to have a good time. I don't need to worry about you. You are just awesome. I'm telling you, you're going to have a good 2.5 years. Um, so I wish you, I wish you direct access to Saturn's energy and that you can work with him directly and work with him to, now what are you going to be manifesting? Yes, you're going to manifest amazing things for yourself, but do so. This is prayer, and this is particularly Saturnian prayer, okay? And I've been reading about that in a book called um, 
The Greatness of Saturn. Any of you who are keen on Saturn, check this out. And today I read the importance of when you pray, that you pray for all. Yes, I want for me, you know, I want a new house or I want a relationship or I want to deepen my spiritual practice or whatever it is that you're wishing for. It doesn't matter if it's material, spiritual, romantic, fun, whatever. Wish for it, pray for it, great, but be praying for all. That this be, yes, good for me, but, you know, good for all, okay? Um, remember that word all next year. So love, action. Now for you it was emotions, and I'm going to include the word all, right? All. Um, that you pray for yourself and everybody. Remember that you are connected. We're all connected. All is one. Very important for next year. Pisces Moon, I'm going to wish you well, and I, I know that you're going to profit and capitalize um, 2020. And uh, take care and let me know how you're doing as well. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for everything. Thank you for interacting. Thank you for all the thumbs up and everything. Last time I had the most number of thumbs up I've ever had in my life. I was over the moon. So thank you for being such a wonderful viewer and for encouraging me. It really means a lot. So thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.